<laughs> Alright guys, um, so today I'm going to be talking a little bit more about drifting. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about stuff like tire wear, stuff like money, mostly stuff you should know before you get into the sport. If you're already into it, this video is probably not going to be real helpful, but you can stay and watch anyway. First off, I'm going to be talking about welding your diff. So if you're looking into drifting, you probably already know that um, people talk about welding their differentials. Essentially what that is, is making your rear end a solid axle. So both your wheels spin at the same rate of speed all the time. This is going to be the most cost effective and most reliable way to get your car sideways. Now the, the bad side of that is it causes some chirping, a little bit of hopping. So if you daily drive your car, it's pretty annoying. Uh, another thing welding your diff causes is um, extra tire wear. Uh, in about six months of pretty much just normal driving, I went through one set of rear tires. So, so when you get into drifting, you're obviously going to need to buy tires. Now when you're first starting off, I would recommend personally just going to a uh, used tire shop or to the wrecking yard and just buying whatever tires you can find that will fit the wheels you have. Um, this will get you sideways and you can get those tires for anywhere from 40 to 60 bucks a set. That will save you a lot of money. Now as you get better and as you progress, you're going to want to start to move towards a, uh, a single set of tires. So buying new tires and using new tires when you drive, uh, this helps you be um, more consistent, you know what grip you're going to have all the time, and as those tires wear down, you'll be able to address, adjust to that. Um, so I would recommend trying to find a nice cheap tire that's going to give you enough grip and it's going to last a while on the track. And um, yeah, just a solid tire. Uh, it might take two or three, t three tries. Um, personally, I use Iron Man iMove Gen 2s on my car. I run a 195.55 in the rear. Uh, because my car doesn't make a whole lot of power, I don't need a whole lot of tire under it. Um, it gives me the grip I need, and it lasts anywhere from four hours to four drift events. It really depends on the track. Um, so, off of that, um, your tire wear will change from track to track. So if you have, for example, a really smooth track like Pat's Acres, um, a new set of tires will last me anywhere from two to five drift events. And at some place like Spirit Peaks, a new set of tires could last me anywhere from two hours to like a day and a half there. So it really depends on what track you're on, um, how fast you're driving, how much you pull your e-brake. It There's a lot of variables, but it's something to think about. So another thing that comes along with drifting is braking stuff. Um, you're going to break lots of things. You will break mechanical parts, and you will break any sort of lip, arrow, side skirt, bumpers, like stuff is going to break if you track your car especially if you're learning you're gonna go off track you're gonna spin out you might hit a wall and that's something you need to be ready for you need to be prepared for your car to come back from a drift event kinda battered it also might come back from a drift event on a trailer personally I have blown up one differential I have blown off a handful of coolant lines and a couple of vacuum lines um, fortunately, my car has been relatively reliable, um, nothing too big, but if you have like a 300 horsepower SR20, you know, bigger issues could come up if a coolant hose came off or if you overboost or something goes wrong. So that's definitely something you want to do. Keep your car reliable. I would recommend uh, keeping your car relatively low power while you learn uh, so you can really get used to manipulating the car when it's sideways trying to keep it in drift takes more time, but at the end of the day, you're going to be a much better driver. So before you go out drifting, there's a handful of things that you're probably going to want to have done to your car. Um, you're definitely want to gonna, you're going to want to go under your car and check all of the bushings. 
make sure all of your bushings are still in, in good shape, make sure they're all still solid, and if they're not, make sure you replace them because that is a huge, that could be a huge issue. If one of your bushings fails, you could have suspension pieces fly off and you could break more stuff. It's pretty easy, it's relatively cheap. Personally, before I started drifting, I went under my car and I changed out all of my bushings with ADA polyurethane bushings that uh, Grogistic offers. Um, other things you would want, probably want to do. Um, you probably want to do coilovers. Um, I drifted on stock-ish springs and the car was really tough to drift. It looked like crap the whole time I was on track. The body roll was horrendous. It really made it hard. Um, another thing that you should do is tape your e-brake. One thing I thought when I started drifting was that you had to have a hydraulic handbrake and that's not the case. Take some duct tape, duct tape your button down and just use your normal e-brake. Um, adjust it so that it doesn't come up to here and use your normal e-brake. If you get more into it, get a hydro, it'll help you out. But personally, I don't think I would install another hydro if I, um, if I had the option to do so. So last thing I'm going to talk about is price and time and my overall thoughts on drifting. So in November, I went drifting five times. I went drifting once, twice at uh, Pat's Acres and three times at Spirit Peaks Raceway. So over the course of that month, I went through a full set of tires. I went through four tires that were brand new. I broke something on my car. <laughs> I used a whole bunch of gas money and I spent collectively probably 20 hours outside of driving working on the car. So in total that came up with the, uh, the entry fees to be around $600 in one month to drive five times. Um, now that is all day, that five full days of drifting. That is a lot of drifting and I don't think a lot of people go drifting that much. But the stars aligned and it happened to work out for me. It's not cheap. When you go to the track, you pay an entry fee of anywhere from 60 to like 120 bucks. On top of that, you buy tires, whether you buy new tires for $100 for a set or whether you buy used tires for $40 a set, there's that to think about. Whether those last you two hours or whether they last you four drift events, I don't know. Um, but it's, it's a money pit. It is a lot of money and to some people it's probably not worth it. But personally, it is like, the, it's the most fun thing I've ever done. I enjoy it a whole lot. I enjoy cars a whole lot. I enjoy sitting in the garage and working on it a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of negatives other than it costs a lot. <laughs> and, you know, that's even not that huge for me. Personally, I think it's worth it. Um, and I do it in a heartbeat. So, that's all I really have to say. Those are some things that I think you should keep in mind um, if you are getting into drifting. And, you know, but at the end of the day, it's really important to know that drifting is all about having fun. If spending that much money is going to stress you out, then don't go drifting. If it's going to stress you out more than drifting de-stresses you, don't do it. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, drop a drop a big fat like. If uh, if I missed something that you guys think is important, drop it in the comments. Uh, people who see this and are interested in drifting, scroll through the comments. I'm sure I missed something. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. You need to take your open differential and clobber a bunch of welds in it.